Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G, at Small Arms. Danny at Trey. Speed in the graphic gangster himself, Cole fucking Susack. Roundtable brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. Danny was so motivated. So he's got this so bat, bat between his legs. Ha, yeah. Ha. Yeah. yeah. Even, whoa. whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he, we were talking about topics because we are so prepared on the show. What we were going to talk about. And Danny jumped up yeah. and ran inside to grab mm-hmm. this book. So I believe it's going to be amazing. Danny, and fucking take it away. All right. Well, in, in theory, hopefully this delivers for you guys. But this is a book that I've been reading. I forget who recommended it, but... This is about Henry Ford. He wrote Fucking the book boss. and everything. Obviously, he's, he's a boss. More I own a Ford now. More First more, time in my yeah, life. Yeah. Shout out Broncos. Shout out Broncos. It's fucking dope. <laughs> <laughs> it um, is. I didn't realize how much of an um, impact he had at the beginning as far as like actually making the car. Itself. All of it, bro. That was crazy. So He created an entire industry, basically. Mm-hmm. So anyway. and, and the assembly line. And the that was him. Line. Yeah. Like, he, that didn't exist. Yeah, that didn't exist before Henry Ford. All right, go ahead. Sorry, Dan. No, that's cool. still in your yeah. thunder. No, I was just going to say, like, he, I mean, they're literally talking about, like, when he made the Model A. So, like, think about what it took to get to the Model T. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, which is what everyone knows, right? Yeah. So, like, his whole MO, I guess, is to basically come up with a bulletproof design before even be- beginning mm. anything. So versus just jumping straight in and then just kind of hoping it's going to work out sort of thing. So it's a little bit different. So like the 20th design is the one that ran mm-hmm. roughly. Yeah. So I know my ABCs. But the one thing that stood out to me recently, I guess, is I guess this one sentence kind of hits on it. But uh, leisure and work bring different results. So, <laughs> so that one kind of like hit. Yeah, I've been thinking, tossing that one around the past few days. Um, and then kind of like the follow-up to that is, if a man wants leisure and gets it, then he has no cause to complain, but he cannot have both leisure and the results of work. So it's pretty banger. What's yeah. your interpretation, Danny? What's yeah, my great, interpretation? Great podcast yeah. question, um, well, I guess Thanks. the um, <laughs> the other part of that too that I he, he it's funny because he talks about it. He like relates to like what's your horsepower? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Are you ten horsepower? Or are you twenty horsepower? Like back in the day, that was a lot. So. Um, Dude, so, I'm like a hundred horsepower, but I'm a bored out engine. Like my shit's like, yeah. Like it wasn't made to be like, but it's yeah. So he's like, like triple now. A ten a ten horsepower <laughs> engine will not pull as much as a twenty. The man who keeps uh, brain office hours limits his horsepower. So obviously we talk about we talk about that one over and over and over again, right? So um, we get here between eight and nine a.m. every day, but like. We, get, we leave it th- between 3 and 4, but, like, we're still doing stuff most of the time later at night and stuff. So that, that's, that's yeah. what I'm thinking about, and, like, that's why I think about, like, how we win, I right. guess. Start back in the first quote. Reread it again, uh-huh. Danny. Let's unpack yeah. that. We can break yeah. it down. So, so leisure Most people might not even know, like, what you're getting at yeah. with that. Leisure yeah. and work bring different results. So what, the first thing I think about is the clock in, clock out thing. Mm. Um, like, you get what you put into it is kind of, like, what, what I'm thinking about. What do you what do you think about? Um, it's almost like, for instance, like, you know, when you guys started working with me, then you see like, okay, what's the expectation to get a certain result? But I think some people maybe have not, they don't really understand that that's not what's going to get them there. You, you get what I'm saying? That like, so uh-huh. it's like sometimes if you don't experience it, if you only know work hard is this because you've never even seen it. That's where I think sometimes, like, that's why it's hard for me to, like, explain it. Yeah. Until you feel what it is to go. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, gu- mm-hmm. I guess, pressure, like. Pressure, deliver, yeah. down, up, blah, 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 constant. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like you start to learn that pace, which we've talked about before. But how do we, exp- how do I explain that to people that have never experienced it? Because that's yeah. what that's saying. Yeah. I mean, the first thing I thought of, uh, even at, like, Muscle Farm 2013 and 2015 when I was a sales rep. I didn't think that way. Uh, my, I like a bit. It was more of the clock in, clock out because like sure. on the weekend I wasn't thinking about yeah because it wasn't who, your company. Yeah, well, I wasn't thinking about who I was gonna visit next week. I wasn't strategizing or thinking about some overall plan Good like on, yeah. on the weekend at least. Right during the week was a different story, but then especially when I got into the corporate world, it, I mean it's so black and white as far as clocking in, clocking out, mm-hmm. and then like you don't ever have to worry about anything anymore. So. But I like it here because, especially like in max effort, like we each have our own silo or silos. 
that we know are going to impact the overall business mm -hmm. and we're going to do whatever whatever it takes to you know make that impact sure so good cool Cole Train, what do you got? The first thing that comes to my mind is the Drake quote from the song Zero to 100 real fucking quick. Of course it is. <laughs> that that's, that's my interpretation of it because... No, please tell me the quote. You know, in my experience, because now I've, this will be year five of yeah. my business career, whatever. Whenever it's first starting out, it's literally like you come here, you have so much to do, and the gas is on, right? <laughs> And what most people would do is they'd go from nine to five, they would go 70 miles an hour, and then they would immediately go back to zero whenever they were done. Because they're thinking like, now it's not my responsibility. I don't have to be accountable. I can do this stuff tomorrow <laughs> or maybe like the next week or whenever like it should be done hypothetically, yeah. right? Where here, it's like we get here, we're already running at 50 miles an hour. Now we jump the gun we go to 50 to 100 in like 2.3 seconds yeah. and then whenever we're letting off the gas we're still cruising at 60 yeah, so yeah, it yeah. never really stops mm -hmm. but i think that um that the way you explained it as you jump in and it's going and yeah. you're either going with it or you or you're gonna break right and then it's like i think what happens that becomes your new normal so then it's always going, but you handle it differently. You put the pl you put yourself like efficiency level in a way to handle all that, and then, like you said, your low end is still going so fast that it feels slow, but it's actually not slow. That's no. what I try to explain to people. Like, you know, I feel like the baseline keeps rising up, uh -huh. so we might look like we're doing it easier, but it doesn't mean we're getting like less accomplished, and, and that's where I think happens over time. And then when you talk to somebody that doesn't understand that, it's like their expectation seems like a lot lower. There's a huge gap. There's a big gap, yeah. for sure. But there is a transition period, for sure. Uh, like as, yeah. And then your work capacity, as you learn how to be able to handle different situations and scenarios, that work capacity just like grows and grows and grows. And I'll throw it to train in a second because I want to hear what he has to say. But I had that transition from personal training to muscle farm. Mm -hmm. So when I was going from PT, just personal training in the gym, which was, you know, I had to be there at certain times, but it was still closer to a clock in, clock out, right? Because I was still had to be there at a time. Defined. Defined time with somebody to make my money. And then I got a little bit of freedom online, but I still could shut it down. I could not shut anything down at MP. Like, it was unshut downable. So di digging <laughs> it was unshut downable. Like, digging that feeling though every oh. day. Like what it was it? Because obviously we talked about it before. With like the high stress, the yeah. raising capital, all that stuff. Yeah, because when you put in startup capital, investors, growth, uh, never being able to uh, meet the demand because of the growth or the money, but excited because you're seeing it on TV. And it's like it just never – and then the international business at the level it was, it literally never slept. Mm -hmm. And so there was something – so I had to then learn like, okay, that will wait till tomorrow because the list is so big that it's it, – I, I literally cannot get it done. It's just like impossible. So that was – and I remember Pyatt telling me, he's like, gee, this is like a different animal, bro. He's like <laughs> – you know, um, and I remember him saying this. He goes, you might not even have time to work out. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's not going to happen. And then I remember telling him I'd do it at fucking two or three, four in the morning, even though we weren't doing it at that time. But I remember saying that to him because that's how important it is. And that's, that was my role, too, is to be that guy, right? Yep. But I remember him saying, like, what we're going to attempt here, and I was obviously on board, like, is so difficult to start a business at zero – idea to take it to a hundred million good bad or indifferent the amount of people that are able to do that is point zero 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 like one it's extremely low percent mm -hmm. even to go to seven figures eight figures you go nine whole different level so he was like that's going to take a different level of dedication stress chaos is probably the best way to explain it um and yeah so i i was thrown into it and then just had to adapt, and so did Rachel, and so did everyone. So what you guys get is a little bit more of a refined version of that because we don't have that other type of unnecessary chaos that I had in that business. But we got the we got the other part hasn't really changed because that stuff can't really change. It's that other part that's so 
stressful, maybe even unnecessary, and just uh, just a little much. But that's what you're trying to do when you're trying to do something like that. Because if every week I was raising capital and we're spending as fast as it's coming in, but then I've got to go to the next dollar, that changes the way I, I definitely interact with everybody because I'm uh, I just not even the same guy. It's hard. So but, would you say that, like, with Muscle Farm especially, like, did you learn, like, really how to compartmentalize stuff? Or like, how do I don't, you? I don't think I did a very good job. Well, because there's. <laughs> I think well, I like was now, a fucking I guess, mess. <laughs> I just think of like now. There's like how many things you're involved in. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, there's yeah. quite a bit. So like, yeah, how do you man, how do you manage that so something doesn't slip through? Yeah, well, I think stuff still slips through. I think that once again, though, I think the baseline's elevated to such a point that the stuff I think's not even done well is still done well. Yeah. You know. I think that um, I can – what's interesting about going through that, and you guys are going to have that version of this and then everything else you do, right? It's like that will be bigger, smaller, whatever, but you at least have a baseline of, all right, that was this big of a business. This is how we operated. I know that's our baseline. So now I have at least that perspective for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And then – so that's why I think I'll handle things differently as, as the CEO here um, and hopefully can lead – you know, better because of that, but it's, um, I'm definitely better at compartmentalizing now because I just know it's going to be there. And I also believe I'm going to always figure it out. Yeah. If, if I'm coming to you guys and I tell you we're done, I ain't got it figured out, then you guys better go somewhere else anyway. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, cause I, I mean, I figured a lot of shit out of my day. <laughs> you guys have seen some of it. <laughs> that was a long rant. Trey, can you talk? <laughs> yeah, what was the, what was the, we got to rewind it about. Hey, yeah, please, go ahead. What was, what was the quote, uh, again? Leisure and work bring different results. So, like, so, like, you guys talked about, like, the pace of work and everything like that. So, like, when I hear that quote, I, like, compare it directly to just, like, actual, rela- like, relaxation mm-hmm. and actual, like, work in a sense. And so, like, you were talking, so, like, what's the, I guess it's, like, how we said that like you can never like shut it off but for all of us though like you said that you get we get to the office at x time and we leave at x time but like the reality is though like i feel like none of us ever actually shut it like completely like completely off and like just like to tie it all back like that's kind of like where cole was saying like our 60 percent or whatever is like nothing you know what i mean like that might like our 60 percent is still like crazy compared to the average person for sure but like to us it doesn't feel like anything like at all though but i think to your point it comes back to that quote that i read a while ago about where recreation leisure work is so intermixed yeah so trey when you're on talking about nfts interacting working on it that doesn't feel like work to you does it no even when you're editing stuff doesn't feel like work to you like you know what i'm saying like and i know that's some a place that you have to be because that's part of your job right but the reality is it's not like you're editing fucking basket weaving it's not like yeah. It's something you also like to do. Yeah. Which, by the way, you're about to squat 500 pounds. Shout out Trey. Undercover Jack. <laughs> Signed up for a yeah. meat motherfucker. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. So, but my point is, is that that's why I think it feels better. It's people that are upset and neat and that are forced to leisure is because they really don't like what they do. In They're my opinion. Avoid it. Yeah. That, yeah. That's that's why I think that right there probably means something different and why not effortlessly but with ease we're able to do that amount of stuff because i'm not involved in anything i dislike yeah at all yeah Yeah. at all even the investing the nft stuff that we're working on the thing with jason the stuff with joe everything i do i enjoy to a certain point they all have aspects of things that i might dislike at points like paperwork anything paperwork related i fucking hate but the reality is, I like all of it, mm-hmm. and that's and that's why I don't think it really feels overwhelming. It does at times, but very yeah, small yeah, amount. Yeah, mm-hmm. and well, also the fact that like our base skill, like me learning design, Danny learning email and stuff like that, you making the first pre workout, Trey learning how to operate the camera, mm-hmm. that was the hardest part that you have to overcome. <laughs> yeah. But now our skill level at that stuff's also high. Yeah. Our system in efficiency is way fucking higher. Yep. So that's why I can make a dope graphic in forty five minutes. Yeah. Or less than that, you know? Yeah, facts. No, that's true. And then I can, you know, from start to finish, bring a product to reality in a couple months. You yeah. know what I mean? Where it's, 
before it took a half a year. <laughs> exactly. At the, in, at the beginning, everything took so much fucking time. It was way harder mentally to even figure out that stuff because yeah. there's so many other things. But once you got the base product done, then you could start thinking about like, how do I now take this to 100 million and build yeah. this shit? Yeah, you're right. Same uh, thing. That, and that's why I believe, uh, well, once again, it's just like the building blocks. They just build on top of each other. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe part of it is adding skills and things but really somewhat mastering part of it first before you because a lot of people i used to hear multiple streams of income that's like something people like rich guys talk about right and i used to think like i just want my one stream of income to like support me and like my job first Mm -hmm. now that entry point was like eight years (laughs) that was a long time that just personal training from 98 99 to mp which is 2008 Mm -hmm. that's that there's a lot of other stuff going on. So if you figure, like, Cole, you've been in the game five years. Danny's, like, at that seven, eight. Trey's now, what, three? Right, Trey, that you've been yeah. here? It's like, think about, like, just mastering what you guys are doing right now for eight. Then you add to So, like, I think that gets overlooked in my story sometimes because I've had so much other shit happen since 2008. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I for mean, sure. Yeah. It's a lot. I think uh, that sentence, too, when I see it, I feel like it's definitely like uh, maybe uh, you know, just part of the times he lived in with the early 1900s as part of it. But it almost looks like he's like treating him as like mutually exclusive. Like you can have one without the other, right? Like yeah. Um, basically, uh, how I think about it now is like you know, we were just fucking off about the arms on arms yeah, yeah. armor earlier, right? We Kyle plugged it in, found a. a a Star Wars website, and now we have a complete write-up. Like, like, there's, like, funny stuff like that, but, like, that was just us, like, we like to do yeah. arms. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, we, <laughs> and then we like to create fun stuff. So, I mean, that that's that was, like, a perfect example of the, the mixture of the two. But it's, like, the once again, stuff that's at work can be your leisure, too. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. it, it's the... Enjoyment. It's the, it's the, it's the, mix, it's the mixture. Because mm-hmm. I'll say I get the most inspiration whenever I'm, like not actually creating anything and I'm lo- and I'm watching like movies I'm watching like yep. Star Wars and you're shit not like, like that. trying intentionally I'm not sure yeah right? or no. if I'm scrolling on t- Twitter dude I'm connecting with so many people do you think mm-hmm. it's like I'm that's a strategy because I'm thinking like oh I could potentially connect with this guy he could help with this business mm-hmm. he could do whatever like it's yeah. it's it never stops that's why Michaela's like it's she she like works the nine to five she never relates and I'm like I'm never off like my brain's always working. I'll see something and I'll go, "Oh, I could add that." Yep. And then the next day I'm like doing it. Well, but once again, the base skill sets there, Cole. That if you see something, you can actually work on it and make it. That that's the thing is you already spent the time to get that. So you're like, "Oh, I can make that. That's fucking yeah. sick." You know what I mean? And that that's also, yeah, I don't know. I was writing arm workouts on the <laughs> track today. Just saying. Right after my it was lunch, I'm writing <laughs> arm workout names. Just saying. Uh, Rachel asked me the other day why I think I have so much to say. She's always... How do you respond to that? I go, well, no, th- this was a real thought. She goes, because I was like, hey, I want to work on this other book, the Squat Every Day book. She's like, how do you have that much stuff to say? And I'm like, I'm like, Rach, I like absolutely love what I do so much and I'm so in it that the aspects of it, I'm like as deep as it can be so I end up the immersion of certain things are so deep, squatting being one of them, that I feel like at this point, because now I think I started squatting every day in 2014, 13. I mean, you're talking it's almost a decade now. So I do feel like, and after that last squat, which I got second, but whatever. the last, Well, that's another story. Um, that I can talk about it and go like expert level almost. So it's like, once again... People are going to see the book come out, but I missed, you know, a hundred front squats the first year Mm -hmm. because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And then, you know, all that deep immersion, which then allows me to have a lot to say, Mm -hmm. but there's a a lot of silos like that happening. And so I just thought that was a funny question the other day when she said that. I mean, I I literally want to have a whole library of all this shit that I've I've dug deep in over the years. Go ahead. I'm going to bring out that quote again because I can't say yeah. it enough, but go ahead. So do you want to go a different direction? What Kind, kind of go off the same quote, but... Um, sure, Danny. Yeah, the second part of the sentence, if a man wants leisure and gets it, then he has no cause to complain, but he cannot have both leisure and the results of work. Gary Vee said this all the time in early content. I'm not saying you're a bad guy. 
I'm just saying don't complain if you're not willing to put in the work. He said it all the time. Like, he's, he's a fucking maniac, right? So what's happened to him is a product of that. And that's what I used to say. Like, if I'm willing to do what I'm willing to do, that doesn't mean you, not you, but metaphorically, you are willing to do that. So don't complain when you don't get my result. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I don't feel bad for getting that result. I don't feel bad for one fucking second what I drove in here today because I know what I did the first the four hours before I got in that. And I know what I did the fucking 24 hours before that in the fucking 20 years before that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, I think that's the thing. And if you're willing to put it in, you'll get that result. But are you willing to do it long enough? Mm-hmm. That That is the fucking key. And I think people get entitled because they want the leisure. And they don't realize if you're going deep enough with what you like to do and you're willing to put that time in, you can get the leisure. I have more leisure now than I've ever had in my life. Mm-hmm. But it, but it's compartmentalized, you know, and still with a fucking side of vegetables of I'm still working on shit I like, you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. that that That's right there, I think, a huge part of it. For sure. Yeah. The key, though, like, is how you said that you had to put in, like, the 20 years, though, like, where the time lets, like, yes. it's just, like, the <clears throat> actually consistently putting in, like, that time, like, over years and years and years. Because, so many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, um, so, like, last night, actually, I was on, I had a call with someone from, like, Singapore about NFTs. That's so good. And Love that. Yeah, and he, Shout and he, out. yeah, and he had a, and, like, he asked, uh, he was like, okay, so, like, what, basically, like, what about the pro, so, like, what about the project, though, like, in, in, in the NFT space right now, essentially, like, a lot of people are just flipping NFTs. They're not, like, actually holding them long term. Yeah. So, like, what, so, like, you know, what are you going to do, essentially, to, you know, not not run into that? And I was like, well, you're not going to not run into that. All you can do is just, con- all you can do with the project is just consistently deliver for 5, 10, yeah. 15 years. And continued utility, too, Trey. Right? Exactly, because the NFT space is so new. It's only been around for, like, a year or two. So like the reality is these projects actually haven't delivered over time, but it's so what's going to be important is like five, ten years from now, who's still delivering? Yeah, that's really what's going to matter. And or if you have that long game, like you guys do, or even what projects are still like lasting, exactly. like what's going yeah. to be around? Yeah, yeah. What, what's the blue chip stocks? What's the blue chip NFTs yeah, like outside of board fucking eight? Yeah, you know I mean, but, but like, but like. The thing that was like Bored Ape though has only been around for one year though. Shit's so so new. like people are comparing that as a quote unquote blue chip, but how? But what are the stock blue chips? Apple, S- Amazon, 70 years Microsoft. Old. How yeah. old are those? How long? How so long did it take those to establish the brand that they've established? Like the reality is like Great this point. shit has to be done consistently over like 10, 15, 20 years if that's what you really want it to become. Your combined age is still less than me or right at. You guys got all kinds of time. <laughs> I mean, it's just the fucking truth. Like, I, I, still so, got a, I still got a lot of life to live. So if I'm looking at, like, investing in you guys, not directly like I was able to, but, like, on the market, I'm going to say, Trey, are you 22 yet? 22. Yeah, and, and uh, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle's 21. Shout out. 22. All right. Cole's 25. So it's like, you're like, these guys. That, so a good example is when I went to Joe, I was looking at another guy who was 60. And I was like, well, Joe's the same age as me. So he's probably going to have similar interests and be in the game as long as I'm going to be managing my money. So it's like if I'm looking at a new industry, very talented, motivated guys that are settling in, it's a fucking huge, huge advantage I think you guys have because of the way you're talking about it. I want I'm not, These guys are long haul guys. You know what I mean? And that right there would, would make me want to buy your NFTs just from watching you guys online if I got that. Which I'm hoping like clips like this will help that. Yeah. Like, yeah <laughs> shout out. <laughs> shout out. You could run that on Varsity Creatives channel if you want. Yeah. That's a fucking that's no a commercial. Free shout outs. <laughs> no <Back>. for shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that that like is something that you guys because once again, it's like the stock market in this just started. Yeah. I mean, fuck. That's so just think so just think so just think Yeah, so just yeah. Think <laughs> it, so just think if you pick the right ones. Huge, bro. Yeah. Fuck yeah. When every one of these are worth like a million? How many Ethereum is that? <laughs> hopefully, a shit ton. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. hopefully, hopefully 125. Yeah. Hey, ho- hopefully by then one Ethereum. Yeah. Yeah, no shit. That'd be bad. Yeah. That'd be bad. Yeah, yeah. 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 I might change my name. You guys were, I mean. You guys, change my name. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, 
<laughs> I own I own um I I registered the domain. I own corygfitness.eth. So Yeah. Whenever the trade's got that. <laughs> so so whenever you're ready. Yeah, let's fucking go. <laughs> That's amazing. So good. So good. <laughs> All right. Uh I think it's time for a break. Okay. So, we have to take a break. So, we're going to go commercial. So, we'll be back in like 30 seconds. All right. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Max for Muscle. With us is the Director of Sports Performance, Tyler Treadway. Treadway, take it away. Danny, what do you have over there? Oh, you know, some tri-blend protein. What flavor is that? S'mores. Boom! Whoa! Now with the NSF certification, <clears throat> college coaches, if you have a sports team that you are in charge of getting their nutrition right, we know that your players aren't eating right, so that's why we went out and got our S'mores tri Protein NSF certified so that it's safe, so your kids are getting the nutrients they need to recover, perform on the field, on the court, whatever it is, we got you covered. If you need it, you can reach out to me directly, and I will help your athletes order it for you. For your program, we have all your needs here at Max Effort Muscle. Hell yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Treadway. Back to the show. We're back. Great, uh, great commercial, Cole. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this quote again. It just keeps coming up because we're living a lot of this, right? I'm going to read one more time. By L.P. Jax. We'll call Shout him L.P. Jax. Duh. I don't know who this guy is. All right. A master in the art of living draws no sharp distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his education and his recreation. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence through whatever he is doing and leaves others to determine whether he is working or playing. To himself, he always appears to be doing both. I love the leaves the other play part of that. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like, yeah. you know, when people are watching the stuff on social media, it looks like we're just fucking off all the time, yeah. which isn't true, but it is true a lot, too. But once again, that's up to their determination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say our promo skills, it might look like we're having fun, but that's just because we're so fucking good at it. <laughs> it's almost too like, easy. For real. <laughs> that's true. Um, anything else in that book? Book of tricks over there? Dang. Um... What else are you getting from Henry Ford? Let me see here. Mm. Well, one thing I was going to s- follow up on what uh, kind of Cole was alluding to was when you guys aren't feeling creative. Mm. So, yeah, I have a lot of those. So times uh, for obviously sure. you go through those spells or whatever. But like, so when that happens, obviously you're not going to keep trying to like, you know, intentionally find out what's cre- what creative thing can you can you make. But like, what are some of the uh, you know sources or outlets you turn to? to try to like create that spark i think like what cole said is watching things like do, basically doing things that are enjoyable like watching funny movies mm-hmm. looking at art reading books of guys you're like oh man i fuck with that dude like let me learn more like yeah um that's where i got a ton of uh creative thoughts when i started listening to all nipsey's uh interviews uh when i used to listen to pox interviews um even like reading more about kanye like creative people that have their own lane like like nipsey said like there's no traffic in your own lane. It's yours. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's what I kept trying to remind myself. Like, if I can stay authentic, if I'm really into it, like, where can I like find stuff that'll spark ideas that then I send Danny eight audios, but I might not send him any audio for a month or two months. You know what I mean? Or I might do a bunch of articles or like daily fires. I was struggling with for a little while. I didn't even do any for like a month, but then I can do four in a row quick. Like, it, it, it doesn't – you're not really entitled to any day or time. That's why I think if if personal development is ever present, I think, and you have uninterrupted time in the morning, that's why the Lunge and Learn has so many different facets of why it's so good. I think it gives you a chance at it more often because you're getting that time to yourself, which a lot of people dislike, I actually need and love, and that gives you a chance to be creative more often I think because as I started doing those things in my life I realized that the creation of things came easier because they were more available to me that's that's my interpretation mm-hmm. yeah I think Trayvon yeah so oh ooh, 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 what do you got Trey <laughs> <laughs> hold on go ahead <laughs> I'm getting my I'm, I'm not gonna talk I'm gonna listen okay yeah so I mean so like yeah that too but what were can you go? Can you rewind it again? Yeah, go ahead. Rewind what? No, what are you saying? What I say? 
my fucking my brain went bro- blank. Oh, like blank. like ha- good, what, cool. What, Pick it up. So, what do you do whenever you're not feeling like saucy? Like you're okay, feeling yeah, like yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're feeling oh, no, no, like no, no, you're hey, like I, I forgot. I needed to a reminder. So <laughs> like so you know I needed a little reminder. All right, so yeah. So hold on. So whenever you're not feeling Trey Speedish, can you go like do you go like Trayvon the air or sometimes you just go Trayvon? Yeah. yeah, so I, f- I forgot. I remember what I was going to say now. So, okay, good. So to agree with both of you guys, both of those things, like I love doing those, like either it's watching a movie, you know, some, something like mindless or like playing a video game, reading a book, something like that. I love those things too. But also though, like for creative stuff, honestly, like literally just taking like a, just a straight break away from it all yep. and like not even thinking about it at all. That's probably like for me, like what actually like helps the most because like, then I find then like if I'm not even thinking about it all or something, then you might be like just randomly in the fucking shower or something, and then mm-hmm. you remember like, oh yeah, there's this one thing you could do, and then like you just write down in your fucking notes and come back to it again. And then like, but like for me though, ju- literally just like stepping away from it. How about it, like smoke a bowl, watch cartoons? Yeah, that's cool too. But <laughs> I mean, I'm just that does. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sorry. I don't. I don't like. I don't like to like. I don't. I don't like to do that though. Like to like sit down and like think of an idea. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> so th- the way I think. I was about trying things, to be funny. <laughs> it was funny. It was kind of funny. Good. It was still yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the way I think about this is uh, our homie Brian Peters. Shout out Peters. You know Shout his. His stoicism ran on how people need to have different faces and masks yeah, they can I love put that. on. I usually find myself there's like I can go from being the graphics guy, right? Mm-hmm. Whenever I get tired of that and shit's not hidden, I just go, "Oh, now I'm the clothing designer." Mm-hmm. So I'm now s- like the Susac yeah, as yeah. with Dier, right? Mm-hmm. And then if that's like not hidden and I get burned out of that, then I go, "Oh, now I'm the fucking NFT Mount Rushmore guy." Whoa. Then I'll go, "Oh shit, and maybe NFT's not hidden now. Now I'm ultra fucking jacked." Cole, yes. the trainer guy. Yeah, yeah. So, it, so it's going through those cycles. The like sometimes, crew. yeah. Like it's just like putting my focus on some different avenue that will still help everything that's going on. You know. I think that's uh, awareness of the personality too, Cole. Which is because you've 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 had a lot of time with yourself to to realize who this guy is. You've been doing things for a long time. Like to lean on that because I have the same thing. Like you know what? I need to be in my trainer bucket right now because yeah. the development bucket ain't there. So go deeper there. Be creative there. Is that flowing? Mm, now I can move back to this. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I agree with that a lot. I like that. Because there's sometimes where like, like making That's a really like making thing. graphics. I'm like I don't like I don't want to do this. Like mm-hmm. I'm like, I guess to the point where I'm so tired of it. I'm like I'm more than a graphics guy. So then I'll go look at clothing. I'm like I'm now a clothing designer. Like that's me. So I like it though. I mean because you're just leaning on stuff that um, can get moving because something's gonna be smooth. Yeah. You just got to figure out what, what, what you're on. And it's just like a different avenue. I mean, the creating like social graphics and like all that stuff is com- is in the same silo as making clothing designs, mm-hmm. but it's co- it's a completely different operation way of thinking. I just think making gear is fun too. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? when one of my goals is basically anything that's in my wardrobe, like I made it. Like yeah, I that's, that. that's the true yeah. goal. Yeah. I like that. I, I either am wearing stuff that we've made or stuff that's inspiring me. That's pretty much the two, like... I, well, these shorts have nothing to do with that, but this shirt does because this is Nipsey's. And then the, the T-shirt I'm wearing is my homie that owns that distillery in Denver. So, like, I, I just show in love to him. So, it's like I, I think that a lot of people maybe unintentionally do this, but I've always intentionally done this. And, and I was thinking about this the other day. Rachel mentioned this something, too, and I think it comes from my great-grandma, which I've never even probably talked about this. She displayed all this cool shit at her house when I was a little kid. So my mom would take me there. She died when she was like probably like 98, but I was probably like, I don't know, maybe like 10 years old or eight years old. I was young. Well, I would go to her house, and she collected all these unique things, and she traveled. She was one of my only family members that traveled the world besides my grandfather in the war. And I could go, like, even though it would be like we'd go to grandma's for an hour and it'd be kind of boring, but I could just get caught up in looking at all the shit she had there, like the knickknacks and the things she collected and the pictures and being in Rome and being here. And she always had like elaborate jewelry. She was just like a cool, they called her Cora. She was just a cool lady. And so I think that I don't know that she did that for motivation stuff, but she always had stuff around almost like not like pack rat level, but just 
I don't know. Just always mm-hmm. shit was like displayed. So as I got started collecting baseball cards and the little figurines and like players that the players that I was collecting were giving me motivation. I think it all kind of started there. And so then if everything that's going on around me represents something or reminds me of something, just like music does or just like art can, I think I started doing that with like a lot of stuff. Um, maybe it was intentional, maybe it was unintentional, but it started becoming more intentional as I got older. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, that's something that I think continues that process of being creative, being inspired. Like you have to have it in front of you all the time. You know what I mean? And I think wearing stuff that you made is part of that. Big time. Cause you're like, wait, I found that hat. I'm the one to put the design on it. You know, like in that you take maybe you don't take it for granted but i mean we do it all the time now but it still represents you and know what well, I mean? it's also i think about it as like any piece i make or whatever of it's a reminder of like what was going on on at that time mm-hmm. so even like uh how we went to the rolex store and we got that book yeah. I, I put that book on my tv so i always think about that time uh-huh. like my end goal well, is and to, i gave that to you i made that on purpose yeah, for that <laughs> one of the goals is to have like anything that's hanging up or any piece of i'm wearing there's a story behind that yeah because that's where the real sauce is uh, yeah because life's Cause, really about experiences and, and then like you no know, 10 years from now i can pull back on like what was going on at the time where i was at in my career yep. what was going on like that's some like cool shit so I'm, all, I'm thinking about that stuff, too, in the future. Well, because I think reflecting in, in that being present, you being present, but also reflecting and having that stuff around, like all of that is so key to the overall thing that it's really the mountain we're all trying to climb in our own way, mm-hmm. right? It takes all of it, dude. That's what I'm saying. Like the intention to attempt to be successful and do what you love to do is literally a lifelong process. And it takes all of these little things to get there. And so if you're not intentionally doing those things... Because, like, I, I've explained to a lot of people, like, it takes all of it. All of it. Because then you might hit something easy here and there, but none of this shit is really that easy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just not. And that's why some people want to go towards the leisure. Yeah. It's all up to you. <laughs> it's all up to you. Literally all up to you. Um, I want to uh, shout out this this girl named Ella that messaged me. I sent it to Danny, and I was telling Cole about it, and I'll send it to you, Trey. It was, um, it's a classmate of AG's. She's a soccer player at Granville. She hit me up and she said, I was in a car wreck and I had um, I had a concussion so I couldn't train. And so the only thing I could do was podcast and books. And I know her mom, she was actually, I think, an Olympic alternate in swimming. So she's a beast. And her dad runs races and stuff. So they're a fitness family for sure. But I don't know Ella, uh, you know, from around town or whatever. And she reached out and she said, I just need you to understand how impactful the book was, the How to Build Confidence Win in Life, that it made me you know, really think about what I want with my life. And she said this, the stories that you told made me feel like I was there. And I thought that, and she listened to the audio and read it both. It sounded like she said, I feel like I was climbing in the back door of the car when I was getting gas to go to the to pat the driver's seat. Yeah. And so when I saw that, it, it was really impactful for me because it's, it means that it's for everybody. Because when I'm getting chirping like that, it's not just some muscle head, which shout out all muscle heads. I'm a muscle head. It's not just people in my initial demo. It's, you know, somebody from town I don't know in a whole different age group, a whole different gender that got something from my crazy ass. And I just told her like how much it meant to me because then it just reminds me to keep doing these things Mm -hmm. because they are impacting people just like us doing this show, right? And so that was like, I just, you know, I don't know if she'll ever hear this or whatever, but just when people are impacting you, like, you know, throw a line out at them because as motivated as I am, that's part of the oxygen to keep it going. For sure. That, that, you know, and her going, I'm sure out of her comfort zone to reach out to say those things on a direct message was, was impactful to me, maybe as impactful to keep going like it, like the information was to her, you know what I mean? So it was, it was just really cool. So it's like, that's uh, and there's people that are inspired by each and one, of, each one of you guys that listen to this show. So you guys should reach out to any of us and say, Hey, that thing you said, this, this, this did that. Like, and I'm trying to do a better job of that, whether it's with you guys, other people I look up to, um, you know, like I, when I hit up ET the other day to send him a book, I was like, bro, you've been helping me be motivated for years. Like I might not listen to ET stuff for months or a year. And then I might listen to two videos that I've listened to a hundred times, by the way. Like when I made the transition from Muscle Farm to doing, you know, Corey G Fitness and then in the Max, I listened to this one ET video almost every fucking day 
for like months, the UOU, which by the way, he just dropped a book called that. It just makes so much sense. But I remember it's like a seven minute video mm -hmm. every day. He gave it out for free every day. I listened to it because I kept, because I was in that mind and I needed it in front of me every day then because I was, yeah, I was brushing off the dust. I was licking my wounds. I was like, you know, I owe it to myself to say fuck that and go to this now and create the life I've always wanted, the authentic life, which is what we're all living in right now, right, in our own way. So it's like that was like um, that that kind of shit's important, man. But I, I just wanted to shout out Ella because that was like super meaningful to me and that's like passing it on, right? And and I think that that, um, you know, if people are inspiring you, you should reach out because I, I think maybe some people go, oh, they're so big and they're not going to see it or whatever. They might not see it. What happens if they do see it? And, and because of that, I thought, you know what? I told Cole this this morning. You guys are so young, you don't really remember Oprah probably. Well, you, maybe you know who she is. But I'm like, I want to be in Oprah's book club. I think that's my new idea. So now she still has it on iTunes, I'm pretty sure. It still exists. Now she doesn't have her show anymore or whatever. She has one on Netflix. But I, I haven't done any research on it. But my plan is now to get the book in Oprah's book club. Shout out, Danny. That'd just letting you know. Hilarious. It, fucking amazing. But why not? Man, why not? Yeah. I mean, I think Oprah will fuck with me. Shout out Oprah. Give you the shot. Yeah, give me the shot, Oprah. I'm ready. Put me in. All right. Someone else want to talk? No? Are we good? My mind's racing. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Good. Yeah. Trey? Anything else? Do we have a quick uh, small arms that, says that segment? Was, that was kind of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that was it? Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I mean, I guess my I guess input and like what I do, if I feel like my head's going to explode or like, I mean, I'm not required to be as creative for like graphics, photos, whatever, but like mine's... I guess similar to Trey. I try to not listen to anything <laughs> and, like, go on a walk or something like that. You I, went on a walk yesterday. I almost hit you. I that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I was Maybe. pulling out. I'm like, what are you? I thought he needed something. I'm like, yeah. Danny, what? he's like, I'm just going on a walk. I'm like, oh, okay. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> be, be right back. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, it does make a huge difference. That and then, like, I mean, the movies and shit, but, like, uh, sci-fi stuff. Like that, yeah. just it's like completely random and different, and then you just turn everything off. I think just laughing yeah. helps. Yeah, like watching. literally just watching the gifs in the graphics part of where it intermixes, like the shit we were doing yesterday with Vern Troyer. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> and I like, and it literally brightened up my day. Yeah. Even though I don't know that the promotion is doing that great, but the reality is like it was just fun to like come up with mm -hmm. watch the videos and do yeah you know what definitely. I mean so that that's yeah. that that shit right there so if I that's why I watch those uh, Steve Harvey videos that I always send you guys which are funny <laughs> whether you want them or not yeah but they make me fucking laugh my ass off because that's like my humor <laughs> yeah. and so if I watch like two or three of those I'm like all right I'm good yeah <laughs> <laughs> shout out Steve Harvey I fuck with Steve Harvey too I should, I should holler at him. Um, you shout at him all the time yeah I do I do <laughs> I love Steve Harvey so since Danny we're not doing Danny asked question can I do Cole ask question so I go Cole, it's our show. You can do the fucking right, one. All right, cool. Fuck, fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah, it is. Yeah, you watch no, that fuck off, Cole. This is our fucking show. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm going to start with Danny. Danny, uh, for the listeners, what was your go-to, because today's Flex Friday, when I'm recording this, what was your go-to arm exercise today? Uh, what was my uh, 100 forehead curls? Oh. Biceps only today. Do you Let's feel like go. you have maximum peakness in your biceps? Oh, yeah. For sure. They were screaming. Screaming. Is this a new unit shirt number. you got going on here today? No, I, I, Daddy, likes, Subtle. Daddy likes that yeah. three-quarter sleeve. Yeah, yeah, yeah three-quarter sleeve because yeah. it, 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 yeah, it, it chokes it, the bottom it, it of the Yeah, it chokes <laughs> it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 AG chokes the forearm. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Yo, yo, <laughs> yo, did you incorporate any triceps today or no? No, no triceps today. Dude, actually, that's on. that's actually not true. I did I did 100 push-ups. <laughs> that's false. 100 push-ups, yeah, which goes to my next question. Corey, Yes. how are – can you give us a your melon update, please? Like what day and how many push-ups? melon? update because so, we talked about big melons yes so yeah. you like if you look at historic pictures of me cole yeah now that you asked this i found a picture the other day i need to send to you guys right when i moved to columbus so i'm like well i don't know maybe 18 years old i got skinny arms skinny legs and big ass chest because i was a bench monster when i was a kid right and for some reason i could walk by maybe a dumbbell and my fucking chest would grow it just i had good mind muscle connection now when i got my shoulder hurt it has taken my melon size down, but I have rehabbed myself. And now with the added 200 push-ups per day, my melon size is increasing. So not only the volume from the top. So if I ever have a beater on them, I have great cleavage. Nice. But it's like the underbelly of the, of the pec now is tightening up and I'm like Stella is getting her groove back. Nicole. Okay. And I'm yeah. telling you that like I am going to be, so fucking yoked 
because I'm going to get to like, I think three to 500 push ups every day. And yeah. then when I bench something nasty, people are going to look, they're going to just be fucking disbelief, Danny. And then they're going to say, Fuck this that. motherfucker again. That's my favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker again. Uh-huh. And I wear them out so much, they give up. Oh. This motherfucker again. Yeah. Melon well, size. Melon so, primary. yeah, just real quick. Yes. Let's uh, let's start a scale. Uh, we'll update this weekly. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 69, how fucking jacked do you feel now? Oh, I'm still on the low end. I'm probably 12 and a half. 12 and a half I 69. Because I see in my head what's going to happen. Gotcha. And I've experienced it a little bit in the past. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, when I go full 69, <laughs> oh, shit gets <man>. real. <laughs> oh, man. You at home better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Full motherfucking send 69. Yes. All right. All right. That's good. Wonderful. All right. Now, uh, Dier, Dier, right? So, Jeez. for the people who don't know, Bruce and Pablo are about to take on New York City, right? I'm just curious. Yeah. Who's the number one person at NFT NYC that we'll be going to that you're excited to meet or connect with? Do you have anyone in particular? Any projects? And can we tag them on social with this clip? Yes. <laughs> no, um, I'm excited for the. This is gonna sound. A- this is gonna sound absolutely ridiculous for the yeah. viewers back home. I'm okay. this over my phone. Just say the, I'm the, excited. The fog? No, I'm no. excited for the, the, the furries. <laughs> <laughs> no furries. There will be no furries at NTMYC. I'm excited for the sappy seals. Yeah. Okay, I know what that. I've seen you tweet about after yeah. party. Okay. Because it doesn't start to very late, and I know Cole saw, and Cole, Cole was like, "Bro, it doesn't Cole start." So, dude, <laughs> what time does it start at? Like Eleven or something. Oh. It's going to be a while. It wild is New York City, City. Yeah. yeah. So it's going to be fun. I'm yeah. excited though to just meet all the NFT people and network and see and just meet all these people that you see their tweets and yeah. they're just straight shit posting or just straight posting memes. Yeah. And I need to put a face. Yeah, 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 to yeah. those people. I really like how we're going outside the box here, because one, Smart like, we're guys. very daring to even go inside of the NFT space, but now we're going, we're in, we're meeting with all the NFT like dudes, basically. You could be like one of the five families, guys, and girls. Yeah, you know what I mean, and girls. Yeah, I mean the thing <laughs> is, like, is there any like hot NFT? Oh chicks? yeah, dude, big yeah. market there. So big market. I mean, oh okay. Yeah, <laughs> Come on, yeah Trey. Shout we're, out Trey. We're just going to be ultra in it. If you thought yeah. we weren't ultra in it before, we're yeah. about to be ultra in nah, it. No, this is so, so smart for you guys. Like, why not? This is like, it's almost like if I didn't go to like a big fitness event, like why wouldn't yeah. I? You, like, you guys like have, yeah. to, have to be there. Our goal is to eventually where we are putting on Correct. the events. So we're going to go there, connect, and be like, oh, you never, you want to come visit Ohio? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Now there's a Midwest so, event then. Yeah. I like that. So. That's fucking smart. Big plans, but yeah. I'm excited to meet all the little guys, I think. Little guys, the Adam Bomb squad I just got into. I'm excited to meet those dudes because we made a lot of very good connections. Like, there's a lot of dudes who are, like, my NFT homies that I'm always checking in with to see what they're what going on and stuff like that. So, I'm excited to meet those dudes. There's no way that by you guys putting yourself out there like this to go connect in a place you're, no like, unfamiliar with that you don't come back with probably even way more than you even think you can. Like Big every time I go do stuff like that, I come back and go think, why the fuck I ain't, why don't I do that more? Because it's hard to get out of your comfort zone to go travel, to make all those changes, to do that, and you're early in the process still. Like, but you guys are so deep in it, it ain't gonna be hard for you guys to be in there networking, and and you're already so good at the other things you do. See that that's what no one understands about you guys yet. Not only business, but the other skills that you have, and together the skills that you have. There's gonna be some heavy hitters that are gonna say. Can't wait for these guys. They ain't going nowhere. Yeah. I'm telling you, that, that youth and the drive and the understanding, it's big for you guys. And people are going to pick up on it. They should. Or they should just listen to this. You guys can market it, run it on a fucking Instagram ad or something. Facts. Yeah. All right. Sounds All right. pretty good. We good? It was a good episode. Yeah. Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G, at Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speedin, the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susack. Brought to you by MaxUpperMuscle.com. We are out.